I mean, this is a good roof. Quack your hand like a duck. I don't know if you can teach the will to survive. Sticky latch. There we go. Hey friends, welcome back. Every year, it's really, really sad. People die in their vehicles, stuck in an ice storm, snowstorm, you know, whatever. Inclement weather strands them somewhere. Temperatures drop well below freezing. And people die, they succumb to hypothermia sitting in the driver's seat. And there's absolutely no reason for that. Reason number one, I think, is that that hypothermia is really not a bad way to go. I mean, all things considered, you shiver for a while and then eventually you stop shivering, you get real tired, you kind of just fall asleep and that's the end of you. You need to understand the, the signs and symptoms to look for so you can avoid getting that far gone. Don't let your temperature, body temperature drop too far because once it gets too far, there's not gonna be much you can do about it. So uncontrolled shivering, you need to be doing something immediately to change that. Uh, light a candle, crack a window, light a candle, put it on the dash. Set your spare tire on fire. Uh, I mean, consequences be damned. If you're gonna die of hypothermia, do whatever it takes. Think outside the box. I mean, I, obviously I'm a survival guy. You know, I, I've got lighters in my pockets and I've got all kinds of different ways to start fires in, in my vehicle. I think that Part of what's missing from education is that, uh, from our kids' ed educations for the most part, is that they, the problem solving, the critical thinking skills, the thinking outside the box and being creative, I think is, is, is neglected a little bit. So I've really been working on that with my kids. If I was real desperate for heat, I could always pull a cap here and fish something down into the tank, soak something with diesel fuel, pull a line from underneath and let some of that diesel fuel or something drip onto a, a rag or t-shirt, whatever it is, and then light that on fire too. Rip the seat covers off of the seats. If those are flammable cloth and all that stuff will, will catch on fire if you can shred it up enough to turn it into some sort of tinder. These are some really cheap seat covers that we got from the thrift shop for a couple bucks. And I'm gonna see if I can set these on fire. Something that I'm not sure about is the is whether or not the survival instinct can be taught or not. Can you teach somebody the will to get up out of that driver's seat and do something about saving their own lives? I don't know. I don't know if that's possible or not. You can teach people all the skills, all the knowledge, teach them all the tricks and hacks and all that kind of stuff, but but can you teach them what what really matters? And that's going. On, and that's what's up here. Can you teach them that that drive to keep on keep on going when it gets really really tough? All right. All right. Everybody's got something like this floating around their vehicle, around the floorboard or something like that. Leftover paper towels from a restaurant. These will probably light up pretty easily. There we go. Got a little flame going now. And then throw on whatever you can find to get this thing to warm you up. Little pieces of seat cover as your tender. And then you can throw on bigger fuels as you can come across it. Take the spare tire and throw that thing on there. It will burst into flames after a few minutes of having some, some tinder like this from our seat cover on there. And it will burn for a very, very long time and burn very, very hot. Obviously, try not to breathe in too much of the fumes. But a little bit of fumes from a, from a spare tire is a whole lot better than dying of hypothermia. Crawling underneath the vehicle is actually a good... I mean, this is a good roof. This will keep you protected from rainfall. You're not gonna get wet laying directly underneath the vehicle. So let's say you're in more of an, like an urban environment, you're on foot, 
Um, you're moving your way through cars, broke down vehicles, and the post-apocalyptic setting that we're thinking about here. Um, crawling your way, and this is also an inconspicuous place to camp out. You could crawl underneath a car, and no, people will be walking by you all day long and never notice you're there, and you could stay out of the elements. Having something to lay on is a good idea because eventually it rains hard enough, the ground is going to get wet, and you're going to be laying in a puddle of water. But, but if you have something to lay on, you can catch some rest underneath the vehicle all day long, all night long, and stay dry. Get an oil leak. What are you going to do? A lot of people say that during a snowstorm, whatever it is, that you should always stay in your vehicle. Okay, always is a dangerous word because situations change and, and variables change and little, a tiny small variable can mean the difference between you living or dying. So sometimes staying in your vehicle is the best choice. Sometimes getting out of the vehicle and starting a giant fire or walking to safety, which is not very far away, is the best option. If it's really, really cold temperatures, if it's drastically cold temperatures, and let's say your vehicle ran out of gas, the heater is no longer working, um, staying in your vehicle could be a really dangerous thing if you're talking about sub-zero temperatures. Unless you've got enough layer of sleeping bags and all that stuff, if you're prepared enough for that, those types of situations. Having something as simple as a candle like this one, this one happens to be a 16-hour emergency candle from Exotac. It has three wicks. Each wick will burn for 5.3 hours. Total, 16 hours if you burn one at a time, basically. But if you wanted to really generate some heat in your vehicle, you could light up all three of these things and, and it would make a pretty big difference. Obviously, the smaller the cab of your vehicle, the, the easier it's going to be able to warm it up. If you've got multiple individuals in the vehicle, that will help warm up the cab as well. Make sure you crack a window if you're doing something like this because you don't want to asphyxiate either. So light it up, sit it on your dash, sit it someplace safe where it's not going to catch on fire. You're going to burn your vehicle down while you're inside of it. That would be bad too. So I can set this thing someplace safe on my dash. Probably right about here is my best bet someplace where it won't fall off and burn the vehicle down. And if I close all the doors and crack the windows, it will get pretty, just barely crack the windows, don't, don't open them up too far to let out the heat. It will make it pretty dang cozy inside your car. Ton of heat coming off that candle right there. And now, like I was saying before, sometimes getting out of the vehicle perhaps setting up some sort of impromptu shelter and starting yourself a giant fire outside of the vehicle might be the better option. It just depends. Now, I know for a fact that you're not going to bushcraft your way into a shelter that's better than your vehicle. This is rain tight, wind tight, and it's going to keep you protected from the elements. So if you're talking about freezing rain, ice and snow and all that stuff, probably the best situation is going to be able to stay in your vehicle and try to stay as warm as you possibly can. And don't forget the simple solution of just getting out of your vehicle every now and then if you start to get too cold and just do an exercise physical activity get out of your truck and do a uh, hundred jumping jacks and you will be warm i guarantee it so understand the signs and symptoms of hypothermia realize what it means when you start to uncontrollably shiver if you can if you're shivering no big deal i mean you're just cold and uncomfortable but if you start to get to the point where you're really shivering and you can't stop it you can't manually stop the shivering from happening that's a problem get off of my road get out of my <laughs> Another test that I've done to test for hypothermia is just your level of dexterity. So it's really easy to open and close your hand right now. But once you get really, really cold, it'll start to be like this. <laughs> I've been so cold before that I could, I could hardly even open and close my hand. It was so slow and just you had to really focus on it. So if you can't do this, you can't quack your hand like a duck. That means you're getting a little bit too cold and you need to do something about it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't done so already. Ask lots of questions, leave lots of comments. That would be great, and I'll see you on the next one. You're so weird.